It's been an absolutely wild week for the markets in terms of news events and major unfoldings. We've had Bitcoin chopping all around the range. And the question is, are we going to leave that range? So in today's show, we're going to have a look at everything happening within the markets. We're going to have a look at the most optimal time to allocate into altcoins. And uh, we're going to have a look at what's been happening with this long-term Bitcoin range. So if you look over here, uh, what's happened in this week, we've been saved by Hong Kong ETF approval. That was when we were about to break down the range low. Then we went into a crypto bloodbath, uh, Dubai floods, which has been absolutely wild. I've been here for that now. Uh, uh, we have Iran and Israel escalating. Uh, we have GCR, a very, very famous trader who's known for taking an account from $1,000 publicly into just over 100, I think, and $30 million. He retweeted and came back saying that it's a good time to be buying altcoins. We have Elon tweeting about Dogecoin liquidations rolling in with mass liquidations on both the long and the short side. And the halving is pretty much right around the corner. We literally now two days and 10 hours away from that halving event. And this is what happens you get these absolute whipsaw effects where the market is designed to swing you in and out of those positions uh but yeah speaking of the dubai, dubai floods i think that this is a great great uh little skit over here have a look at how absolutely crazy and wild it's been yesterday i wasn't sure if i was going to make it back to my hotel uh, but luckily we had a massive four wheel, four wheel drive vehicle to uh steamroll through the 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 waters of dubai a crazy crazy flood Holy fucking shit, folks. Reports are coming in that the token 2049 crypto conference in Dubai has been transformed into the Book of Genesis. And that's because in an unprecedented turn of events, an almighty flood is sweeping through the streets of Dubai, a city that has never experienced a drop of rain in over a thousand years. It turns out the crypto bros have all descended on Dubai only to end up exactly like their portfolios, underwater. Just check out this incredible footage of crypto influencers running for cover as they get quite literally liquidated. Hello, boss. Salam alaikum. Me today no come job. Job no coming today. Me water too much road, road. Oh my God, is that Gary Gensler doing a rain dance? Well, they talk about over-leveraged idiots getting flushed out, and this might literally be it. But there is a Noah's Ark, folks. A shitcoin you can depend on, and the ticker is Tooker. <laughs> so, guys, there it is. I mean, this is an example of what Tooker is doing within the space, building these uh, meme coin reports. And this is what I told you guys such a long time ago. I said, do not fade this coin because it's always going to be relevant. It doesn't matter what sort of major news event is taking place. It does not have to be only crypto related and it's going to have the ability to report and create content. So look at that massive wick yesterday on the Tuka token. Actually, a lot of fear coming down in the market. Let's take it from the absolute wick high down to this recent low. That's a 64% drop and pretty much immediately started to recover, bouncing aggressively off of that. How far is that bounce already? Uh, this is produced as it's stands a 56% bounce on the Tuka token. And again, a reminder, Whale Room got their entry down here. Long and strong, we continue to hold this. Now, if this does start to push back up and take out these highs over here, if you see the token pushing up and grinding beyond this, this is going to start to look like one of the absolute most bullish charts in crypto, never mind one of the most bullish meme coins in crypto. And it looks like it's speculated, Rand made a tweet, it's speculated that they could be doing a buy and burn of around a million dollars a month worth of this token which is currently sitting at a 61.67 million dollar market cap suggesting that of course it's still relatively early given the recent unfoldings ordinarily if this were just any other meme coin launched on solana i would probably say that around this 50 to 100 million dollar mark i'd be looking to take profits but uh, this is not the case this time this time this one is looking really really good make sure you go and follow tuka on twitter right go and have a look at the content that's coming out over there i believe they're going to get a sponsorship for tuka very soon remember all that sponsorship uh, capital that they accumulate is going to go into the buy and burn. They're going to buy the token and then the tokens that they buy, they're immediately going to burn, thus reducing uh, the, of course, supply. So 
let's go into the rest of the market over here. Uh, you can see over here on the banter bubbles, well, a couple of the coins are starting to bounce. And once again, you just can't fade these meme coins. I can't believe that we're in this cycle. Every cycle, there's something different, right? We had the DeFi summer in 2020. Then we, of course, had the NFT phase, which went absolutely crazy, where they were getting insane evaluations. And now it's the meme coins, which constantly seem to be bouncing back first and strongest with Mog up 13.14%, Trump up there over 20.72%, uh, Slurf the Sloth, up 11.92%. And uh, the DJs are showing you where their risk appetite lies and where they want to be putting their money, which is nuts. Don't worry, this show is not only about meme coins. We're going to have a look at uh, the Bitcoin market. We're going to have a look at the dip buying opportunity and how long that could potentially last. When will this dip end? That's the question. And what is Bitcoin's next trajectory? Is the next trajectory set? Where can you expect price to be two to three weeks from now? If you want to find that out, please smash the like button, hit the bell notification and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I am coming to you live from Dubai. I'm here for the Token 49 conference. All right. Quick reminder, you can see Banter Bubbles is still mining those rewards. You have less than 24 hours to submit your Solana wallet address so that you can be airdropped uh, the gummy token, which is launching on 420. That is 100% confirmed. Despite the rains in Dubai, and there's a lot of de uh, delay with uh, these conferences there will be no delay on the 420 launch remember of course 420 has significance and it's a gummy token after all so we're keeping it on that date where are we within this bitcoin cycle just stepping back a little bit giving you some perspective based on this chop uh, and this craziness within the price action you can see we're about here right these are your price cycles you can see the price cycles uh, ultimately come down and then you have that pre-halving dump shakeout. Sometimes it happens just after the halving, but give or take within a two-month period, eight weeks uh, around that halving cycle is where that chop phase happens in the shakeout. And later on is where you get the real absolute blow off top of the bull market. So should you be shaken out of your positions now? I don't think so. I've stated this explicitly. We are moving from a strong uptrending market into now a slowdown phase, also known as a ranging market where you're chopping between a range high and a range low. Until we lose that range low and close multiple candles below, there is no real sign of a downtrend taking place. This is simply just a transition from an uptrend into a ranging market, right? If we break below the range lows, yes, we could start to establish a bit of a downtrend. So we'll, we'll get into the levels in just a bit, but with only two days and nine hours to go, um, it's it's not looking too terrible, not yet, not looking too terrible. This is all planned, right? This is programmed into Bitcoin. You can see from Rec Capital, it's been almost a month since Bitcoin entered into what they call the danger zone, which is right around that halving cycle. Uh, and ultimately the pre-halving retrace has begun, right? Uh, during that time bitcoin retraced 18 percent in march uh, and recently this time it's retraced 16 percent in april so it's looking like there's a good chance that we'll close the first red monthly candle that we've had in a long time i think we've had six months of straight upside and this is part of the game right uh, you can't go up only every single month without any pullbacks. That would be an unhealthy chart and an unhealthy market this is really good for the longevity uh, of crypto all right but could the dip be over or could we nearly be at the end of that dip? Well, if you look at this data, um, uh, if you look at the data over here, Tether once again have minted another 1 billion uh, worth of Tether, right? 1 billion worth of Tether tokens. That's our own version of stimulus into the market. And you can see the prior times that this has happened, right? Have a look over here, the prior times, every time uh, they start to create a major bottom within the market based on their, uh, their mints. And we just got another mint over here, which means that we could be close to the end of this major sell-off. Here you can see it as well. If you look at uh, Tether's increase over here in the stablecoin market cap, every time this is around the FTX collapse over here and they start to print, uh, then they create a major bottom within the market. And now we're getting much more aggressive printing than what we even saw back in the FTX collapse and the so-called banking crisis where the USDC peg, which led to a major, major bottom within the market. So there's the levels, nothing's changed over here. We do need to continuously monitor the volume because we'll need an increase in the volume uh, to eventually break out of these lows. For now, expect the range to continue to persist and the range levels are very, very clear. Even on a high time frame, you can see uh, this is give or take 
your range levels between uh, a low of about $50,000 and the high of about $74,000. So uh, we write about that mid-level. Now you could potentially come even lower, but as long as you don't close multiple candles below $59,000, it's still an opportunity, which means a dip buying opportunity can be had all the way down to about $52,000, which lines up over here with your 21 exponential moving average on the high time frame. This is, again, as mentioned, created a major, major flush within the open interest with a lot of the coins going negative. ENA with completely negative funding over there. Uh, dark, dark, almost black over here. Uh, you can see over there at one point it went to negative. 388% uh, funding, uh, meaning that if you long over there, you're getting paid massive amounts to continue to hold those long positions open. And this is very, 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 very healthy for the market, uh, especially within the phase that we're at right now. If you look on the weekly time frame, there it is. You can see also ENA, uh, you can see um, BNB, you can see BCH, those are the ones with negative. TIA also went negative. The rest of them have been flushed back to neutral zones, which is very, very good. You have the BBWP on the bottom of both the Bitcoin chart on the left, uh, or excuse me, the Ethereum chart on the left and the Bitcoin chart on the right-hand side, which is creating also a reset similar to the funding, right? This reset means that uh, you can recontract. So the markets move through expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction. You can't expand for too long without setting in a blow off top. So this is very, very healthy when you move through some expansion and then you start to recontract, build a new strong base of support or a range, what we're in now, a range, right? That range allows for this recontraction phase to take place, which builds up enough momentum to lead to the next expansion, which means that you can go to higher prices. So all in all, I view this as pretty healthy on the high time frame. This is one of our worst case scenarios. If you look at the five-day chart over here, again, we did get the cross between the yellow and the green moving average. So the short cross below the medium time frame moving average. And that means you have to view the next moving average, which is your high time frame, coming in as support. It's constantly rising each and every five days, uh, which is obviously a good thing because that means that the invalidation zone becomes higher and higher, right? So ultimately, around that 52 to 54 k level is fair game if you do see another flush to the downside that will be the zone to pick up more bitcoin right and there has been some strong buys which have come into the market recently i'll show you the tweet on that some big big buyers came in yesterday and crypto is here to stay right if you look at andrew kang he says crypto continue to expand because it's vastly better than both casinos and other trading markets in terms of a couple of different things right it's volatility the variety and options that you have to pick from, the complexity uh, in terms of the tokenomics. You have the social component, uh, which creates almost a cult-like following on some of these coins. And we know cults are not good, right? But they're sticky. And that's the point. If you want to get into a strong trend and you find one of these sticky cults, uh, look at the XRP holders. They're still on the XRP bandwagon. As long as you understand the way that the trend works, you shouldn't get caught on the wrong side of the cult, right? You have uh, five higher odds of developing an edge when it comes to trading uh, because at the end of the day, you can be the casino, right? You can decide when the odds are in your favor and drastically improve your chances of winning. The same way that poker players can uh, decide how much risk they want to put on the table. And there is a level of skill that comes to poker. And that's why they get banned from so many of these different casinos because they have an edge. You won't be banned, right? You're not going to be banned based on your edge. You're just an anonymous player on the other side of your computer extracting wealth from the markets. So he says over here, it is simply the most engaging multiplayer money game that's out there in the entire world. And I love it. You love it. We all love it. That's why we're here each and every single day. And you know who else loves it is the CEO Pavel, who is the uh, CEO of Telegram. And I'll play this video for you in just a moment. But this is the paradigm shift that's taking place in crypto, right? A mega, mega paradigm shift. I've spoken about it before. There's going to be a video released tomorrow. It's a pre-recorded video where I talk about this paradigm shift in the sense of how Bitcoin is starting to flip silver, which has been an asset class that's been around for thousands of years. And many people 
have bought into as a store of value, right? Uh, call it a gold 2.0, a secondary uh, a metal to gold, right? And then, of course, eventually Bitcoin can start to target gold. This is the paradigm shift that's happening with the new generations, the millennials. And then, of course, we go into the, the generations that come after them will probably be even more and more inclined to buy into these. And I don't want to dox my uh, net worth, my portfolio, any of that stuff. But I can tell you that my mentality is almost exactly, exactly the same as uh, what Pavel's mentality is that I'm about to play for you in this video. I adopt the almost exactly same methodology and approach when it comes to my investments. Um, have a look at this video. It's absolutely stellar. So for me, it was never about money, right? So I have a few hundred million dollars in my bank account or in Bitcoin since 10 years ago, and uh, I don't do anything with it. I don't own any real estate, jets, uh, or yachts. I don't think those, uh, uh, this lifestyle is for me. I like to focus on what we are doing uh, with Toad. You don't own anything? Like yeah. big assets, you don't no, own? No big assets. Exactly. An island in Hawaii or? No. No, no, no land, no real estate, nothing. Why? Well, because for me, my number one priority in life is my freedom. Also for me, it's what... So that's it, guys. Same for me. My number one priority in life is freedom, the ability to move anywhere I want at any point in time that I want to, and not to have too many physical assets that can essentially be stolen from me, right? That can be destroyed. Then it becomes this whole wealth preservation thing when you have a lot of money. And this is the mentality shift that you're getting. You're getting the upside uh, reward of this network effect within crypto where it's rapidly expanding uh, and ultimately a lot of players, big players like the institutions are now starting to open up their mind to introducing of course these uh, asset classes to the masses and we here early, we got in long, long before them. And I just see it as a risk to reward thing. It's absolutely massive. And this is the mentality and the shift that you're getting. Again, more on that video tomorrow, it will be released. It's gonna be a pre-record, so I'm not gonna be live, but have a look at the video tomorrow. Uh, there is a major, major shift that's happening right now, paradigm shift within the markets. Um, okay, let's have a look quickly at Bitcoin on the lower time frame. So you can see going through this lull consolidation period, when you look at the ADX, the DI negative and positive, the ADX being the blue line, over there is just oscillating and consolidating around. Uh, Bears took control ever so slightly over here. Um, Bears will take full control if the ADX gets above uh, the DI positive over there and starts to rally aggressively towards the upside. Otherwise, for now, for the time being, I would still treat this all as just one major consolidation that's taking place. Um, and we just need to wait it out. This is a waiting game. So for those of you in whale room, you may be wondering why is there not a ton of trades that we've currently been opening? Because this is not the environment to take a ton of trades, right? For now, we're looking for opportunities to build longer term positions into strong altcoins that we can hold for the rest of the cycle. Uh, we haven't yet seen that, right? Um, we're still waiting for the opportunity. Low time frame trades, this chop, uh, you can only trade at the extreme extremities of the range, that being shorts at the range high, longs at the range low, and nothing else in between. We, it's a waiting game. It's sitting patiently, that is a trade, right? You don't always have to be in a physical long or short trade. Being in a cash position can also be a trade while you wait for the next major move. So if you look over here, there is a potential that Bitcoin could start to put in a low over here because you have some bullish divergence, which is taking place on Bitcoin right now. But I'll give you the levels to clear to give full confirmation. They haven't really changed too much based off of yesterday. It continues to remain this mid-range level, right? The pink highlighted zone over here is absolutely significant. Bitcoin must, must, must get above $67,500 and hold multiple candles there. If we can do that successfully, then you can say that, um, yes, the bullish divergence is playing out. Bulls are taking back control and this remains a consolidation. Otherwise, for now, that is formidable resistance lining up with your 200 EMA on the one hour and the four hour time frame, which has been governing the downtrend and we below the pivot level, meaning that the RSI, technically speaking, is still trending down. Now, I know that this is uh, considered uh, unconventional when it comes to trading markets, but uh, it's nailed it, right? Again, it's nailed it. The bear moon, we got the bear moon over here. I warned you guys live as it was happening. And I told you, be careful. There is a bear moon that's printing. I explained to you why and how it works. And look at that, send price to the downside. I said to you as well then that we really want to see bulls at least 
hold price up and not break down the range low level for the duration of the bear moon, which is a 15 day period. Once that 15 day period comes to an end, should they have held up this range level, then ultimately we can say that that probably was going to be the major bottom. We can go up for another two weeks, probably continuing the consolidation. And then the next two weeks will probably go down ever so slightly to set in a higher low. And then we'll continue onwards and upwards. And that would have been the pre halving dump. That's at least my forward looking plan of what I'm hoping for. Um, and if you look over here, this could still be a possibility, right? So as long as we're below this, TA and price action, technical analysis, and the candlesticks, the price action always comes first above anything else, above the bear moon, above any of these other indicators that we use. Until we get above that, risk is towards the downside. Don't get me wrong with that, right? Risk is to the downside. So you might see another push up over here based on the bullish divergence happening on the low time frame, and another sweep lower, possibly into here. You break that range low level down. Then it's a question of how deep do we go? There will be buying demand that comes into the market around these candles over here. Your worst case scenario, in my opinion, would be about a $52,000 Bitcoin. But expect that big players will have bids laid throughout here. They'll be buying, 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 buying. So when you look at it on a daily candle, if you do sweep that range low, you might just get a wick that goes to about $55,000. Immediate reaction to the upside closes above leading into the red vertical line, which is when you get your next bull moon happening on the 23rd of April on Tuesday. So a couple of days away, I think it's like, uh, what, about a week away, six days from now, uh, break back into the range. And then that was it. That was hopefully the high low. Then I'd be looking for something like this, another big push up probably comes down the, the next two weeks, sets in a major high low. So you have low here, major high low over there. And then we can continue uh, with the slow grind towards the upside leading into the rest of the bull market. So that's higher time frame, uh, or at least further out. That's kind of what I'm planning or expecting as a possibility. But remember, don't get me wrong. Please, please, please understand price action trumps all. Where are we within the market? We came from a strong uptrending move into now a ranging market. That's it, we're in a ranging market. If we break and hold below here, then we're possibly transitioning from a ranging market into now a full-on break of structure and a new downtrend. So a lot of new things that are happening over here. We spoke about this on the four hour time frame as well, which is the Wyckoff distribution schematic. This is exactly what we're looking at. You have over here the up thrust. We're hoping for another up thrust after distribution, but instead we got a secondary reset, uh, a secondary uh, retest of those range highs, failure to get through. And if you see that sign of weakness now, and rejection from that $67,500 level. Again, the probability is high that you're going to go through that phase in the next five days, which will line up with everything that I showed you over here, suggesting that there will be bids, right? The bids are going to be spread between $52,000 and about $55,000. There's going to be a lot of demand in this region, which will complete that low time frame Wyckoff distribution schematic, which if we look at the low time frames over here on the hourly chart, I think that this is a very, very nice way to govern what's going on if you want to be safe it's kind of risk off for now until such time as you reclaim these moving averages because you can see your 200 uh, ema which is the blue line over here is going to be governing the downtrend if you can start to get above that 200 ema on the one hour time frame then you're going to break into a new high high right until then it's risk down expect any push into there to lead to a rejection until you eventually sweep this and all those bids get filled which are below right sweep that get back inside and that's the opportunity the plan remains the same it's just taking a lot of time so this is going to all be right lower highs lower lows lower highs lower lows lower highs and we're still expecting somewhere over here probably to create a new lower low and then wait for that shift in the market sentiment wait for a uh, new fear to come into the market and the final shake out to be complete so what does this mean for you at home well there's two different people one there's people that are holding spot positions what it means for you is nothing sit there be patient ride out the storm for those of you who are over leveraged you're in a little bit of trouble of course especially if you're nearing liquidation uh you need to be able to withstand a bitcoin sell-off down to fifty-two thousand dollars. ask yourself what that would mean for your respective altcoin if bitcoin were to drop from here down to $52,000, let's just quickly see what that is as a percentage. You'd be looking at another at least 17 to 18% downside move for Bitcoin. 
that probably means a lot of your altcoins could potentially go down uh, as far as two to six times that value, right? So you could see altcoins go down probably 40%, maybe even some uh, around that 70 to 80% mark, depending on how overly inflated they are. So you need to be able to withstand that if you are over leveraged, you have a tough decision to make if you're holding underwater positions, should you cut those positions uh, or should you add new margin? Um, I firmly believe you shouldn't be adding into losing positions, right? We want to buy uh, or add into positions that are showing signs of strength and we want to cut losers as quick as possible. So you want to let your winners run or add even more to those winners and you want to cut your losers as quick as possible. So I don't necessarily, sometimes you can, of course, it depends on your strategies. It depends on uh, how much you know about your, your trading style and what you're doing. You can add to losers in the sense of bringing your average down and keeping a position open, but it's a risky game. Just understand it's a risky game. You do also have the cumulative volume delta, which has been negative for one of the longest periods of time. We're still looking for a major shift in this, right? We're looking for a bit of a short squeeze to take place. Probably only happens once you sweep those range lows, meaning we need to break into the fifty-two to fifty-six thousand dollar region first. All right. If we look over here at um, the uh, different uh, trading light indicators, which is showing the order book, you can see over there. There's already three hundred and thirty two Bitcoin orders, which are currently set just below that $60,000 mark. So they are looking to buy there. And on the top side over here, uh, your major uh, sells are coming in just above the top side of the range. So traders are trading that range, proving that uh, this is a range that many people have noticed, right? 324 Bitcoin at just below $75,000. Dollar continues to push towards the upside. Here's the stock market. I gave a I gave an in-depth analysis on the NASDAQ in uh, Discord. For those of you in Whale Room, feel free to go and have a look over there if you want the full update. But ultimately, of course, we've broken the uptrend on all the major stock markets, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones. And now we are going through that major correction. Do I think the ultimate top is in for the stock markets? Absolutely not. I just think that this is a bigger correction within a broader long-term bull market. Again, giving testament to why if you're holding longer term spot positions, you really don't have any reason to be shaken out or anything major to worry about. Uh, the probability is incredibly high that these markets will bounce and go on to make new all time highs, right? So that's the picture for the stock markets. Uh, if you look over here, I've redrawn the total three chart, right? Because this is of course your beloved altcoin index, right? Total three uh, is all the different cryptos, miners, Bitcoin, miners, Ethereum. So taking the two largest cryptos out of the equation and looking at everything from number three on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap right down to the bottom. And this is the picture, right? So I've redrawn it. This is a new fitting range. Previously, we were focusing on this as the prior range. We broke out of that range, back tested as support and constant and continued to bounce up. I think that uh, as price action develops and unfolds, it's all always worth going and redrawing everything, right? Uh, recreating uh, the chart based on the lines of best fit. So from my analysis, these are the lines of best fit. We have the range highs coming in over here uh, between 800 and $834 billion. Basically, that will be the real breakout level uh, for a macro bull, uh, bull market in the altcoin sector if we do get above that. You have the range lows, which set in the ultimate lows between uh, 300 and 320 billion. And then this is very, very significant and key. We have the mid range level. So if you use your Fibonacci tool from the top to the bottom and you mark out that mid level, in bull markets, the mid level is very, very significant. As long as you're in that top half of uh, the Fibonacci range or the mid level of the range, you're above the 50%, then uh, that is still where bulls remain in control, right? that is still a bullish market. You have your upsloping trend line over there. If you break below that level, this starts to change the entire picture. So what am I basically saying over here? Well, ultimately you want to buy support on the mid level, which is in a strong area, which theoretically for altcoins means that this is actually the reaccumulation zone. This is where you're looking for signs of strength. 
for the market to pick up. Now you could break that upsloping trend line, slowing that momentum down, meaning that you'd go through a prolonged consolidation period and reaccumulate on the altcoins and later on start to break out. But for me personally, this is where I'm looking to make those longer term buys. And as I mentioned earlier on, I pretty much picked up a very, very substantial bag of Solana right around these current levels. Um, I'll bring up the Solana chart in just a moment. That's something that I'm looking at, right? Now, I would really like to see this rebound and get back into the yellow box over here. That will start to look really strong. The same thing is weakness is in the bottom half of the range. Strength is in the top half of the range. You can take this range over here and divide that into two once again, saying that, well, if you get into the top half, which is the uh, the range quarterly high or into the top half of this range is another way to view it. That would be a strong sign of strength showing that altcoins will most likely break out very, very soon after that and we can have continuation higher. So I hope that makes it clear. Again, summarizing total three, which is for the altcoins, keeping it very simple. This is technically a buying opportunity. If you can't hold and defend that and you gain acceptance below the $555 billion mark, you gain acceptance under there, that's a sign of weakness. And at that point, I would want to cut those altcoins because you're probably going uh, full on back down to the bottom side over there, which would of course be really, really bad for the altcoin sector. So if you are looking to trade the altcoins and you are someone that's over leveraged, as I just mentioned, you probably have a little bit of stress because you could face liquidation. Now, there is a way that you can trade on leverage with no chance of liquidation uh, on, again, shout out to one of our sponsors, CoinW. If you go to CoinW and you go under trade and you go to ETF over here, you can see, again, let's just quickly highlight that, uh, magnified returns but zero risk of liquidation on CoinW. Um, basically, you're looking for the, uh, the it, it will usually say 4L, or 4S, right? L stands for long and 4 would be the magnify effect that you get, the multiplier effect, right? So for example, if you go over here and you want to look for uh, example for Bitcoin, let's just quickly go to Bitcoin over here. You can see you have Bitcoin 3L, 3S, so that's three long, three short, or 6L, 6S. So here you can go six long on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin moves up $1, then ultimately you're getting a $6 return, but no chance of liquidation. So check it out. There's a link in the description below. You can claim up to a $30,000 sign up bonus on CoinW. I'll also be going to the event uh, during the uh, Dubai token 49 period. So if any of you are there, uh, give me uh, a hello when you get there, say hello, don't be shy. And then uh, also this hotel ironically is sponsored by CoinW. So thanks for that CoinW. All right, guys, let's continue. Let's continue on over here. Um, again, I just want to remind you with regards to the uh, the gummy airdrop. Let me quickly see the figures over here because I have some of the figures from the team. This is uh, specifically talking to the whale room community. I told you yesterday, we don't want any, um, you know, crocodile tears when it comes that you didn't get your airdrop because you didn't fill in the form. For the whale room community, we have 2,300 of you which have submitted. So well done. You'll be getting the airdrop the snapshot will occur probably sometime today for the 700 of you who haven't please make sure that you put in the correct address it needs to be a dex wallet right a non-exchange wallet go and put that in for the rest of you you can do it over here even if you're not part of whale room you can do it over here on banter bubbles and then the final final way to get that exposure is of course going to be on blowfin you get an airdrop if you sign up to blowfin deposit a hundred dollars uh and then you can also buy it on the open market it's going to be listed only on blowfin when it launches on 420 which is literally uh three days away from now right okay go to the gummy page over here if you have any questions about this here it is gummy frequently asked questions thread um just go through find it over there they'll answer you you probably have a ton of questions all of those questions are there for those of you who are wondering different things okay back onto solana now one reason also that I'm pretty bullish on Solana and I've been buying mostly Solana meme coins. That's been my main exposure, right? Uh, of course, things like uh, Tuka, things like BlackRock, these, is, these have been some of the bigger positions. We have very few exposure uh, or altcoin exposure, or meme coin exposure on things like Base and Ethereum. Of course, Ethereum's expensive. I just have Lemiao and Hemiel. 
Um, and then on base, I don't really, I think I have mostly through uh, the DJ chain, which is a layer two on base. Uh, I've, I've gone like really, really down the risk curve over there on the far right and taken a bunch of meme coin positions over there. Other than that, I still think Solana is where it's at. If you look over here, Coinbase says trade 50,000 plus tokens on Solana with our Solana DEX integration. Now you can trade Solana tokens on the Coinbase wallet. Guys, this is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly bullish. Uh, you have to understand how bullish this is. Coinbase is one of the biggest on ramps for users within the US and as well as many other countries into crypto, right? Uh, they're one of the longest standing over there. They've been playing ball with the SEC as well. And ultimately, this integration means that they'll have access to buy those same things that we've been degening into using a phantom wallet, using, uh, you know, Radium, Jupiter, etc., to make our trades. They're now going to be able to take these same trades. This is very, very bullish. This is also very, I'm not, I'm not shilling my own bags, guys. I'm, I'm being dead serious. This is very, very bullish for Tuka. Why is this bullish for Tuka? Well, <clears throat> Tuka is on Solana, firstly, and Tuka is going to be one of the few meme coins that they're, of course, building a whole media channel around. And you have to consider how many viewers crypto bands as a whole amongst all the different hosts get. Do you understand that even now at 70 billion, I would never have said this before this announcement, but even at 70 billion, this thing's probably still going much, much, much higher. So I don't need to tell you to buy it now because I already told you to buy it at a $1 million market cap. Whale Room community, I told you at 800,000. And for the rest of you on YouTube, when I came back on the Monday, I told them on the Saturday on Whale Room, I told the rest of you on the Monday at 1 million or about 1.2 million, you should be up massively. What I'm telling you is don't sell those tokens. I'm continuing to hold over there. All right. Again, looking at Solana, if Solana goes up, the Solana meme coins go up even more. There's a lot of bullish news around Solana. Solana is now, again, this could change at a moment. I am a trader, guys. This could tra change at any moment. But for now, Solana is my single biggest altcoin bag by far, uh, officially, as of uh, the recent buys that I've just made. Again, we're looking at this upsloping trend line. Can you believe this guy? Dylan. Let's just quickly put my, my phone over here on flight mode. Okay, there we have it. Uh, if you have a look over here, upsloping trend line, we have the range high over here at $120. We've tagged that level potential for a double bottom taking place over here. And this is going to be the broader range, right? I know the colors might confuse you. So let's just quickly take another yellow box and move it down here. Do you see that? That is ultimately what I'm looking at and viewing as the next trading range. So as long as we hold above that, we're hitting the upsloping trend line. I'm looking for a move up to $160, which would be the mid range. If we get and break above, Above that level that opens up the possibility of moving back to the range high i don't expect us to break that range high on the first attempt right i would say yes you probably reject probably come back down to mid-range one more time and then later on you can break that and attempt to take out the prior all-time highs for solana so a lot of very bullish things taking place over here on solana fundamentally We've seen the stress test. It did go down temporarily, but we've seen the stress test in terms of everything that's happened with the meme coin mania. And for the most part, it uh, withheld all of those transactions, which I think is a very, very good thing. So that is looking pretty damn sweet. Uh, ETH BTC is still in a downtrend. That does not change. Uh, go watch any of the prior videos if you want the analysis on that. And we have Bitcoin dominance, which is still 60% is more likely to come before 50%. So still more reasons to be uh, long on Bitcoin over altcoins because of the Bitcoin dominance trending up. But we know that Solana is one of those that has been strong against the rest of the altcoin sector. All right, guys, smash the like button, hit the bell notification, subscribe to the channel, go through, look in the links below. Um, make sure you do your gummy airdrop stuff. Uh, also check out CoinW. I'm going to end it over there because uh, let the fun and festivities begin in Dubai. Tomorrow there will be a pre-recorded video. For the rest of you in Dubai, I should see most of you out and about. Don't forget to come and say hi. Uh, yesterday, I saw a couple of famous people in uh, in uh, uh, Dubai over here eating out and stuff. This is definitely the hub. This is the place to be. I'll see you guys on maybe Saturday. Saturday, I might do a stream. Uh, cheers for now. Have a great day, guys.